a bit like the uh, notion that you can move risk off your book doesn't mean it moves to Mars. Right. It's just redistributed it's within the system. Yeah. And then, uh, lo and behold, when the crisis, when the music stops, right. we find out where it was concentrated, right. and that can have network and contagion implications right. of its own through counterparty Absolutely. transmission. But but those effects not only bring down the financial system, but to the extent capital is misallocated. In, in many ways, um, I'm starting to talk about, um, uh, you know, if you think about the, the um, growth of the capital markets in your and my career, um, I don't know the numbers on this, but they've displaced the credit bank markets as oh, yeah. being the, the dominant F flow, flow of credit. funds. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I imagine when you and I started, the bank credit markets were the dominant source of, of capital, yeah. right? So, uh, and that was driven because of a drive for efficiency. Capital markets are, in, you know, immeasurably more efficient in terms of allocating capital efficiently, quickly, uh, across borders, and, um, and at lower cost than the cumbersome bank credit markets. And that's consistent with how economics works. We drive things toward efficiency. Well, one of the insights that I've gleaned from understanding natural science and particularly complexity science is that sustainable systems actually don't optimize for efficiency. They actually are required to balance efficiency with resiliency. Mm -hmm. So we've designed a system to maximize efficiency through first the growth of capital markets, second the growth of derivatives and securitization, and then, you know, lo and behold, we find out that the whole system became brittle and broke. And, um, and so I think the answer to, you know, a sustainable financial system is to get back into balance with this re efficiency and resiliency, much more in balance, yeah. which will have a cost uh, to it. Yeah, some uh, international trade theorists have talked about multi-region production. Right. And the chains of dependency throughout the network and how a small glitch in one place can bring everything exactly. down, like I said, a dominoes. Yeah. And uh, Barry Lynn, who wrote the book Cornered, has huh. talked about this in most, much of his recent work. Yeah, if you, if you look at, say, a Walmart business model uh, and their dependency on fossil fuel, fossil fuel based transportation, uh, think of how dependent the global economy, certainly in the United States, but increasingly in many countries, is on accessing goods at Walmart. Um, and, and so the, the whole idea of a global supply chain is a efficiency-driven idea, um, but it isn't particularly resilient. And there's a whole, you know, part of this new economy space that I've been uh, engaged in working with is um, uh, promoting very aggressively a need to relocalize uh, production, in part for cultural reasons and in part for this resiliency uh, reasons. And, yeah. And yeah, so I was watching Chris Hedges the other night on television. Is that he was talking about living in New Jersey, and every time he goes to the grocery store, everything comes from Northern California. Exactly. And yeah. he just said, well, I hope it keeps on coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. it's pretty hard in the short run, well, the, in the winter you know, time the, in New Jersey, to grow farm work. Well, we, I'm, you know, one of my projects, I'm invested in a, um, uh, in a sustainable, organic agriculture uh, business in Virginia. Mm -hmm. So we have a highly energy efficient uh, greenhouse growing uh, organic vegetables, primarily heirloom tomatoes, in Virginia so that they don't have to be shipped across the country from California. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that's sort of an So now example. I know which, what place to raid in the winter when I get hungry exactly, if it yeah, breaks down. Yeah. <laughs>